Did you know you can actually import images into Power BI? And therefore you can add them to things like card visuals. I didn't realize this, okay? I saw a Chris Webb post from a few years ago that showed how to do this with Power Query that can convert images into Base64 code and then store it, which is awesome. I'll definitely put a link to Chris's blog post in the link below. And then it got me thinking, I wonder if um, ChatGPT can actually generate that code for me and I can just import that? Well, let's see how it goes. Let's go. I previously knew how to actually link to a, an image URL um, if that image is stored on a web, on a web page somewhere. Um, it's just basically the URL image code, and then you can go and actually uh, link to it. But I didn't realize you could convert images into this base64 code. Check this out. If I go to this table, look at this crazy looking code. Okay. Now, Chris Webb did a post on this back in 2019. Okay. Um, storing large images in Power BI datasets. And he's got a really funky function here, or a little, little routine, little bit of a little query, not really a function, a little query um, that can convert images. You just point it at a folder, it imports the images and stores them. Okay, and the bit that Chris points out here is that um, it actually limited the, the little string, so that long piece of text that breaks it up, the base64 code, it's actually got a limit. So he cleverly splits it apart. If the image code is longer than that, it splits into multiple rows. Let me just show you what that does. Okay. So for example, with Chris's one here, he's got this, I've got an, sort of a baseball image, but it splits it into multiple rows. Let me just show you the code. Okay, so went to a particular folder with a bunch of images in, split and did this various bit of listing. Okay, various little steps in here, which is all pretty cool. And now we've got the breakdown of each. Here's the baseball that's broken down into multiple rows. And then there's an index column added so that they can be rejoined in the right order. But what do I mean rejoined? Well, take a look at this. And this is the super clever bit. There's actually a DAX formula then. So if I come back in here and click on the DAX formula, this rejoins those separate lines of sort of 32,000 characters into one long text string using a concatenate X. So it runs down that little table, grabbing or for a particular picture uh, for that, and that pick, that is the actual um, base64 code, that's the text string. Um, and then the index is used to sort it in the right order so the code rejoins. So it comes in as a long string, it gets split into multiples of 32,000-ish and then rejoined by this measure, which is just super clever and blows my mind that people can come up with this stuff. So awesome, all right? So we've got all sorts of different ones here. And then it got me thinking, could I do this, this splitting and the generation of the code with GPT-4, for example? Now, I guess I don't really need to do it because Chris's code here just does it for me. But I wonder if the processing time is quicker. I'm not sure, but you know, it was a bit of a challenge. So check this out. I've got this GPT called the Imaginator. And again, I'll share a link if you've got it. GPT-4, you can use this link. Um, and I've given it some instructions that I want to generate images. Uh, when it generates them, it should ask me if I want to export the images as uh, a zipped folder, and which I can then use Chris's you know, code to import, or um, actually give me the, a CSV file with the base64 code in it. So let's, let's try this out. Um, let's go, let's create some images. Let's see what it says, okay. So I'd like some images of, um, and I'll give it, let's say some um, different sports, for example. So I'll say tennis, 
and I'll just do a couple in the interest of time. Um, tennis, soccer, and let's say uh, karate. Okay. And off it'll run and start generating these images of me. So my prompt is saying, hey, generate the image, limit the image size to 50 kilobytes if you can. I don't really need images bigger than that. Um, give me the, the DALI code for those images after you've created them. Ask me if I want to export it as a CSV file. Um, turn it into the base64 code and ask me if I want to export that. So a bunch of little instructions about how to do this. I'll let this run and then I'll show you. Okay, so here we are. It's generated the images for me. It's given me the ID codes, which can be quite useful if you want to regenerate images in the same style. You can just say, hey, regenerate these images in the style of, and then add that code, which is quite handy. Would I like to download these images as a zip folder and generate a CSV? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. There we go, it's generated the zipped images, which I can click on to download, and I'll download the CSV file with the base64 codes in. And I told my prompt to ask me if I'd like the DAX measure to display the images. So yes, I would. And I put that code in my prompt so that each time it's just it's just there all right well let's let's see what happens okay so i'm going to copy my code as well just for later and i've downloaded those two folders so i'm just going to do this csv one so let's go into power bi okay i'm just going to go to a blank page just to avoid any confusion i'm going to go get some data from text slash CSV. Here's the file that's just been downloaded. Okay, so there's the tennis broken down into rows of 32,000 characters, transform data. I also told the prompt what I'd like those columns to be called. So requested image name, file name, base64 code, code part index. Those were all bits that I told it to generate. Beautiful, okay. Let me call this GPT demo or something shorter. Cool, and then close and apply. Okay, so down the right hand side here, let me just collapse these other two. Um, this is the little trick. Here's the me measure I need to write. So right click, new measure. And then that measure that I got, I'm gonna use Windows key V to bring up my recent copies. There you go, that one there. And remember to replace this. Now a little trick, here we go, when I've selected that, but Control F2 selects all occurrences. That's Control F2. I'm going to change it to GPT demo, GPT demo. Okay, and here we go, we click the tick. And this image needs to be set, or this measure needs to be set as an image URL. So just make sure you click on the measure, go to uncategorized image URL. Okay, and then if I go to my requested image, let me just zoom in so we can all see this. And then I tick the display image. There we go. It's in there, in the file, which is just insane. Um, if you want a big image, check this out, the new card visual. Um, there may be a better way of doing this. I've only just started playing about with this one. So with the new card visual, I'd like to put it in there, but you can't put uh, just the display image in. Um, if I click on this, it just it just doesn't work. So what I'm going to do, and there might be a way of fixing that, I'm not sure, but I'm just going to go uh, like this. So that's the image, and then go to the paintbrush images, 
and choose image on, and image type is image URL, and you can't put it in there, you've got to click the FX. Again, I may be doing this the wrong way. Please leave me a comment in the note, in the notes or comments if um, I'm doing this weirdly. So there's GPT demo, display image, click OK. All right, and then I'm gonna put it below the text. And if I click on something like soccer, it says there, I don't need that name. So I'm gonna go back to here and say, uh, where is it for this one? I don't need to see the call out value and I don't want to see the category label. So let me just collapse that. And there we have, you know, this could be a slicer or something. The new slicer, the new slicer, the lightning bolt one, as of now, as of sort of the December version, it can't handle this. It only needs a proper image URL to an external site that can't handle these in, inbuilt. I don't, at least in my testing, I couldn't get it to work. But yeah, brilliant, okay. So who knew about that? Who knew you could store images inside your Power BI data set? Pretty cool. And then Chris's way, okay, if I wanted to run Chris's code, I could just go, um, let me go transform data. I'd have to unzip the file I downloaded and then go into Chris's code here. Let me go right click, edit query, and simply just point it at the unzipped folder. So source step, okay, click on the settings cog and just browse for the different folder name and it would import it in the same way. So there we go. Let me know what you think. Um, really interested to see if anybody's using this technique. Um, are there pitfalls, are there traps? What should people be aware of? Um, but I hope you find it useful. Catch you in the next video.